Okay. Um, today, you guys, we are talking about <laughs> what to put in your author newsletter. <laughs> like, it's a big topic, something that a lot of people are curious about, wondering about, like, what do I even put in that newsletter? So, you guys, I am going to see, um, you know, go ahead and let me know regardless of when you're watching this. Okay. This is Ella from author like a boss. And, um, if you're watching this anywhere, but the author, like a boss, Facebook group or page, go ahead and head on over. We have author, like a boss, Facebook group where there's all kinds of good info. We're doing these free lives. Um, I do a marketing one every week. Megan does a writing one every week. It's tons of good information. So Okay, so it uh, looks like, I hope you can hear me, Karen. <laughs> I know you're working, so I appreciate you being here. Okay, everybody else, I am going to get started. Um, I am, the way, you know, I shared it to the group, so I don't know if I can see everybody's watching or all your comments. Do, do, do. Okay, cool. Thank you, Karen. Okay. Okay, so you guys... How many of you guys, <laughs> how many of you, Karen, <laughs> oh, how many of you thought about, oh, thank you, Karen. Um, so Karen says, I put a review of a book I like, a recipe I love, and something else. I have three sections, clarity, comfort, and connection. Is that, is that, oh, and then at the bottom I put my events or something. Oh, that's lovely. That's what you're putting in your newsletter. Awesome. The fact that you're even doing one gets you mad kudos. Okay. <laughs> but today for those people who don't know about newsletters, you know, you don't know if you're like, what do I put in it? Or how often am I supposed to write it? We're going to talk a little bit about that. So today I'm going to talk about how often to send your newsletter, what to send in your newsletter and what not to do with your newsletter. Cause I was like, we're going to get some good information. <laughs> you know, like let's get you some, how often, what to send in it and what not to do. Oh, thanks, Karen. <sighs> okay. So it's, and, and I like to make things practical and as simple as possible. So that's what we're going to talk about a little bit today is how, like what, how to make your newsletter super duper easy. So if that sounds good, I'm going to, you know, hope you guys are commenting on this at some point. Thanks, Karen. Okay. Let's see. So the first section is how often to send your newsletter. And I know there's like, there's like this feeling of like, oh, you have to do it every week. You have to be consistent. You have to do it. And yes, consistency is important. But really what I would say to aim for is about every two weeks. Every two weeks is enough that people, you keep kind of top of mind. Like it's not like months go by and then you get another, another newsletter. So, because if you wait for months, <laughs> I know, hi Karen, every other month, I know. See, what happens is, is, um, what you want to stay kind of, kind of top of mind so that people don't forget who you are. <laughs> okay. Cause we get so many emails in our inbox. So you don't want to send it so often that people are like, oh my gosh, they just always send something, but you also don't want it to be like, they forget who you are. <laughs> that <laughs> they're like, who is this? I don't remember signing up for this. So every two weeks is a really excellent, a really excellent, like starting point. Like it's not too often that you get overwhelmed by how much you have to send. You're like, oh my gosh, I have to make all these newsletters, right? It's not so often for that because twice a month is not so bad, but um, but it, you know, cause you're like, I can make, I can do two newsletters. You're a writer. Plus you're going to have these tips about what to send your newsletter that I'm getting to next. <laughs> so, so, you know, you can do tw twice a month, keeps you kind of fresh in their mind that they're not like, who is this? But also not that you're like spamming their inbox. Okay. And it especially won't feel spammy when you, when you're giving them good content, which is what we're going to talk about in a minute. The other caveat is that when you're launching a book, when your book is coming out, you can actually go ahead and send 
people newsletters a little bit more often, you know, when you're, cause it's exciting for them and for you, especially if you've done a good job of building a good relationship with your audience, because then when your book comes out, they're going to want to know when it comes out. <laughs> it's fair to be like, Hey, my book comes out next week. And then a few days ahead of time to say, Hey, my book's coming out in a couple of days. And then the day of to send one out saying my book is out today. You know, that's, that's totally fair. And, and if you've done a really good job and, and you can with the tips that I'm going to give you in a minute of building a relationship, people don't feel, um, burdened. They don't feel like, oh man, they keep telling me about this book that's coming out. They're going to be excited. They're like, oh yes, I'm so glad she reminded me because I wanted to go buy it. Right. So, or, or I already pre-ordered it and I'd forgotten and now it's in my Kindle. I can go read it. Okay. So, so it's okay to send them a little bit more often when you're actually launching a book. But other than that, every two weeks is totally fine. And two weeks might sound like a lot to you guys, but it's not going to sound like a lot when I tell you what to put in it. <laughs> and you're like, oh, that's easy. I can do that. <laughs> okay. So if you guys are, does that sounds, is that like that time frame every two weeks makes sense to you? Go ahead and let me know in the, in the comments. Like if that makes sense of keeping top of mind, but not so yeah. Easy is good. Easy is like, I am all for easy and making things as simple and easy as possible. Okay. Every two weeks. Hi, Danny. Boop, boop, boop. Okay. So, um, I, I know it every other week sounds like a lot of, it sounds like a lot, right? But on the other hand, let me tell you a story about somebody I signed up. Well, I didn't sign up to their newsletter, but I would have if they'd had one. They had a contact page. And so I sent an email to this author and she had, I don't know if I told this story before, but I'm going to tell it again. Okay. She had, she had, a, she had, um, I signed up, I, she had a, a, just a small, like the beginning of her book in, in an anthology. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I love this. When does your next book come out? And I was like, please contact page. I really love your story. When does your next book come out? And, um, and I didn't hear from her. I, I, I forgot I sent it. I didn't hear from her and months went by and she was like, Oh, you were in my spam folder. <laughs> and I just like, I, I think about you guys, if you were in that situation where you, <laughs> where you had a super fan who was like, I love your book. I want the next one. And you just didn't re reply. How terrible would you feel? How terrible when you're like, you're dying for fans and here's one reaching out to you. So every two weeks is a really good time frame. So now we're to the second talking point, which is what to send in your newsletter. And you know me, I like practical, but what works. So it should be practical. Like I'm like, okay, make it as easy and practical as possible and, and what works. And oh, you guys, I'm so excited to tell you what to send because they're super easy. I'm going to say three things. Okay. Three things that you can do in your newsletter. One, the first thing is to do positive book reviews and book recommendations. Okay. So readers like me, and you may have noticed in some of these Facebook groups, people are always looking for other books in their genre. <laughs> They're looking for authors they haven't found yet. I can read a book in a few hours. And so guess what? I can read a lot faster than writers can write. So I'm constantly looking for new authors that I love. So book recommendations and, and they should be book reviews and good recommendations. Okay. Because People don't want people. There's enough negativity in the world, right? There's enough negativity in the world that people, if you can make people feel better every day, they're going to really, you know, when you get the, when they get an email from you, they feel better than they did before. They're going to keep on opening your emails because people like to feel good. <laughs> okay. So book recommendations and book reviews are an awesome, awesome thing to send your new, in your newsletter. And the bonus that we, I don't know if we talked about this, but the bonus with newsletters is of course the, the content that you put in your newsletter can also be the content that you put on your blog. <laughs> okay. And so if you put it on your blog, there's so many benefits of like, there's so many benefits of reviewing other authors books, especially self-published authors, you guys, because you're, you are, if you are going to be a self-published author, 
it just gets the good juju going. Plus, you it's a uh, it's the first step to befriending another author. Okay, but we're not doing we're not talking about that topic today. Today we're talking about not newsletters. So positive book reviews and a book recommendation or two in your newsletter is an excellent newsletter to send because it's like because people are like, oh, hey, I didn't know about this author and now I do. And I actually have a book review formula um, that I didn't link to here, but I will, if you're curious about that, let me know if you're curious about the book review formula, because sometimes it's hard to write a good book review. <laughs> and so if you're curious about the book review, re book review formula, let me know. Okay. The second thing to send in your newsletter is to, <clears throat> okay. Yes. Good. Karen, Karen's been paying it forward with other authors for years. Well, what you have to do is you have to take it to the next step and be really purposeful <laughs> about, <laughs> you have to be very purposeful about being like, Hey, let's be friends. I just left, I read your book and left a review, but that's really good. Good, Karen. Thank you. I'm, I'm saying thank you for all the published authors who you've left a review for. <laughs> okay. The second thing to do with your newsletter, to send in your newsletter is to do kind of character world posts, you know, or updates about your book and series. Okay. And so what does this look like? Cause it's kind of like, what does that mean? Okay. So you can use your newsletter to build interest and tension around your book so that when it publishes, they really have to buy it. So this is, I love this, like the rubber band, the tension, building the tension so that by the time your book comes, you're like, and we've got this character that you're going to fall in love with. And we've got this scenario and we've got this world. We've got unicorns <laughs> or whatever, or dragons. And by the time they know enough about your world that you've, you've teased them and you've built all this rubber band tension. And then when it comes available to publish, pop, they have to go buy. They're like, give me that button. <laughs> give me the button. Give me the book. I need it right away. <laughs> okay. So how that can look in your newsletter so how you're like, how do I do the newsletter? Okay. Let's say, so we, we call them kind of character or world posts or updates about your book or series. So let's say if you're a fantasy author, okay. A lot of fantasy readers are really looking for cool worlds. Okay. You guys all know that I love dragons. So dragons is almost like an immediate buy for me. <laughs> so if I was to like, you know, because you're, as an author, you're an unknown, to, you, you're you somewhat unknown. Like people don't know about what, what you're writing unless you tell them, right? So you can tell them if you're a fantasy author, yes, I do like dragons. Ha, ha, yes. So if somebody, if I get a newsletter from somebody and they're talking about how they've got, you know, the black dragon who's, who's, you know, you know, whatever, if they're telling me about the dragons in their world, I'm like, Ooh, Ooh, I love dragons. And a lot of fantasy authors love the world building, right? So, cause they love the world. So they're like, Ooh, you know, if people who like steampunk, if you've got some details about the steampunk world, or if you've got, you know, so fantasy authors teasing people about the world is really smart. For romance authors, okay, you can go ahead and send them newsletters about some of your characters or the setting that you're in. What about, let's say this, if you have a romance author, okay, so um, you can write about, you can tell them about your alpha man, right? You can be like, here's the alpha man, send him, hi, hi, Charlie, All right, we're having fun kitty time right now, you guys. <laughs> in the background. <laughs> it's distracting me from my alpha man. Send a pic, find a good picture of an alpha dude. Okay. We're like, this is the alpha guy that, that represents my main character. And it should be taught. He should not have a shirt on <laughs> and he should have a six pack abs as a romance reader. I'm telling you. And then, um, and then tell them like, here's, here's Justin and here's how he's broken around love. You know, and and then people are like, ooh, he's sexy. Here's his, you know, introduce your character and then tell him how he's broken so that we all feel the need to find out how it fixes, how the, how it gets fixed in the story. Like it's an amazing teaser. Okay, so that's number two thing to do 
is use your newsletters to build some tension around your book and you can do that by sharing little tidbits of your story. You can send snippets of your book that you're like, ooh, this is a good snippet. You can do character cards and send images and give a little bit of teaser around the characters so that people want to know more about them. You can, if when you have a map, if you have a map made of your world, you know, and if you, you're going to Fiverr or wherever you're going to get the art done, you can send the map and be like, here's the map. <laughs> okay, so that's tip number two. Tip number one is positive book reviews or book recommendations. That's one thing to send. Number two is to, is to send out character or world posts or updates about your book or series. Number three, ooh, number three, and I don't know if everybody's going to think, I don't know what, I don't know what you're going to think about this, but it's a really, really good one and easier than you think is giveaways. Okay. Now think about it. If you send an email, a newsletter every two weeks, okay, and you rotate between the three topics we've talked about, one, one newsletter is a book, re book recommendation, the second newsletter is an update about one of your characters or your world, and then the third newsletter is a giveaway, well, that's every six weeks doing a giveaway. Now, the giveaways I recommend always are doing other authors' books, especially self-published authors, because it builds you a lot of goodwill. Plus, if you do another author book in your genre, then, <laughs> then, <laughs> then, then you know that you're attracting people to your newsletter, um, and you're serving the people in your newsletter who like, you know, like the, give them a chance to win something every six weeks. Super duper easy. It doesn't have to be expensive, especially if it's a digital copy of the book, because you can do it for 99 cents to five bucks. Like that's all you have to spend. And it's every six weeks you do a giveaway and you let the people in your newsletter <laughs> join the giveaway. Plus you promote it on Facebook, you do all kinds of other stuff, but we're just talking about newsletters here. That's a really great thing for them because they feel like they get to win something every six weeks. And if they're already on your newsletter, it doesn't feel like you're trying to get their email for it, <laughs> you know, because they're already getting your email. So you can do a giveaway and promote it to your newsletter. And that's actually two little newsletters because you're going to want to promote the giveaway and then you're going to want to announce the winner. <laughs> in the newsletter, <laughs> in the next newsletter. So if you do a giveaway, that's a one week chance to sign, one week to sign up to the giveaway. And then the next newsletter is announcing the winner of the giveaway. And, um, and you've got, you've got all these things taken care of. And you can, and you can always say, if you add this in, if you add this into your rotation, when you announce the winner of the giveaway, you can always say, you know, so-and-so won this time, but keep an eye out because we're doing another giveaway in the next couple of, we're do, you know, we're constant, we're going to be constantly doing giveaways. Okay. And constantly is, or regularly going to be doing giveaways, right? If you do regular giveaways, you keep people on your list. They want to keep opening your newsletters because there's another opportunity to win a free book. <laughs> okay. And it only costs you like two or three bucks to do it. So if that sounds, if that, so here's the, th here's the topics, you guys, book reviews, book recommendations, world, share about your world and characters and giveaways. And if you're doing a book, a newsletter every two weeks, you can just rotate through those and you have plenty and plenty of content to send people that they will really enjoy. So if, if you're like, oh, but I don't know exactly how to do this, or you're, you're like, the technology is a little bit nerve. If you're a little bit nervous about the technology, or you're like, I don't know exactly how to, <laughs> you know, like, how do I do it? How do I do a giveaway? Okay, all of this, all these topics are things that we go over in so much detail within the Author Boss Academy. Like we have step by step instructions. Do 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 do. Yep. Karen, yes. Do you mean to do only one of the three in each email? Yep. I mean, you can do multiple book recommendations, but I would just have one email for book recommendations, then one email for your world building or a character card, one email for a book review or book, one email for a giveaway. Yeah. 
You don't have to have like tons of stuff in there, you guys. I know. I know. Those three things give you like six weeks of content or more because you announced the winner. Yeah, no, too much. Too much, Karen says. I've been cramming three things in each email. Nope, you don't have to do that. I know. We tend to try to over-deliver. Over Let's keep it simple, you guys. <laughs> keep it simple. <laughs> I know. Yeah. If you have any questions about some of this, if you're like, I don't know, or if you know you can do it, you're like, I could do this, and you just found that you haven't <laughs> for whatever reason, and you're like, I need someone to keep me accountable. I need somebody to be like, have you done your newsletter? Are you sending your newsletter? <laughs> Are you collecting emails and sending them in a newsletter? If you find that you know you can do it, but you haven't, and you know you need to, Think about joining the Author Boss Academy because we will give you the help, we will give you the encouragement and the support and accountability <laughs> to do it. Especially, it's especially fun when you're seeing other people doing it in the academy and they're like, Yeah, I just added a thousand people to my list. And you're like, What? How did you get a thousand people on your list? It's really encouraging and motivating when you're like, Two months ago, that lady, that lady was in the same space as I am, and now she has a 1,000 people on her list because she was doing it. Very motivating. You're like, I can do it too. I can do it too. Okay. Sorry. That was really – that's my uh, rolling. Rolling. Okay. If this sounds doable to you guys, let me know. If you're like, oh, those three topics, I can do that. A book, book review and recommendation, a little bit of character sharing, and – and or and a giveaway, I can do that. I can do that. If that sounds like possible, let me know. Okay. And the timeline, that's the thing. Okay, sorry. It's so doable every two weeks. Just those three things gives you six weeks of content. Karen says, I can do it. Yay. Okay. <laughs> Okay, the third, what we're going to talk about now, what I'm going to tell you is what not to do with your newsletter, okay? So what you do not want to do with your newsletter is to collect their email addresses and then not send them anything, <laughs> okay? Like, they have given you, they have gifted you with access to them and their inbox. Because you guys know how, you know, we're, we're pretty discriminating these days where we're like, we're like, okay, I only want the emails from so-and-so people. Like, I don't want emails from everybody because our email inboxes, our inboxes get so full. So if they have given you access to their inbox, you don't want to ignore it because they have chosen, <laughs> they've chosen to give it to you. Okay. It's valuable real estate that they have given you that little bit of space in their inbox and you don't want to take it for granted. Okay. So the way I think about it is like this. So imagine you make an acquaintance, like imagine you're at the bookstore and you, and you make an acquaintance with a potential fan. Okay. You're like, you're like both well, standing there. You're like, Hey, Hey, Oh, Oh yeah. I write these books. And they're like, you write those books. And they're like, yeah. And everybody's excited and you have this connection. Okay, you have a connection and and you're like, hey, you know what? We should hang out sometime. And they're like, yeah, that sounds great. Here's my contact information. And they give you their contact information. <laughs> and then they go home and they're like checking their phone, hoping to hear from you. They're like, okay, I gave them my information and they're the one who said we should hang out sometime. I didn't say it. They said it. <laughs> And then, but I haven't heard from them, haven't heard from them. And if you never reach out to them, if you never send them, then you leave them hanging. It's, it's like totally, it's lame. <laughs> I'm just going to say it's totally lame, you guys. Like, like you don't want to be that guy. Don't be that guy. Don't be that girl. <laughs> you know, don't be that person who's, who's asking for people's contact information and then never <laughs> never sending them anything like they you know that's so send your newsletter i've given you the tips now you have everything you need to do it right if you go through the previous weeks this month or the other videos it takes you step by step through what you need to do to get started and now we're talking about what to send and you know what to send and you have no excuses <laughs> okay another thing not to do is assume that your readers don't want to hear from you okay 
do them the courtesy of acknowledging that they know their own minds. Okay. Like they chose to give you their email address, do them the courtesy of, of respecting their choice <laughs> and, and fulfilling what they've, you know, don't assume that they don't want to hear from you. And I know a lot of authors are like, but I don't know what to say. And you know, I'm not that, I'm not that big a deal, especially as women. Cause we're like, I'm just a person, you know, we're so, we can be so modest. <laughs> okay. Like modest to the point of hurting ourselves and hurting other people, hurting the people who've given your email address because they want to hear from you. They chose to be on your email list. If they don't want to be on your newsletter anymore, if they, they are finding the content doesn't work for them, they will unsubscribe. And you don't have to take that personally either. That means they're just not a good match for you. But they have that option at any time. So keep sending them stuff. The third thing I'm going to say what not to do, and this is especially for newbies. Okay, if you're just first starting get, sending out your newsletter, I'm going to say don't get too creative or original. Okay, and so what does that mean? It sounds terrible. It's like, be original or creative. I'm a writer though. <laughs> okay. But newsletter is marketing. So you want to send what people want and repeatedly send it to them because newsletter is marketing, not art. Okay. It's not your book. It's not where your creativity needs to go. What you want to do is be, re be predictable and consistent in your marketing. Okay. So when you're first starting out, a lot of authors tend to think that what is fascinating for them will be fascinating for all of their readers. And unfortunately, I'm so sorry to say it's not always true. So here's an example. And I know a lot of you guys have done this and I know I have probably done it myself because I'm like, I love it. So that means everybody must love it, <laughs> which is like my book. Here's an example. My book is set in the South and in my book, they eat a lot of pie. Okay. I love pie and I love baking, which is true. I do love pie and I do love baking. <laughs> okay. Plus I found a really great recipe for pecan pie. So in my newsletter, because it's related to my book, because they eat pie in my book and I found this really great recipe and I love pie and I love baking. I'm going to send a recipe for pecan pie in my newsletter and everybody's going to love it because I do. And it's not, we all have done it. We have all done it. So I'm not being like, you, <laughs> I'm like, it's just you. You're the only one. No, we've all done that. But these people did not sign up for a recipe newsletter. <laughs> Three, today is National Pie Day? No, no, no. March 14th is National Pie Day. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. So they didn't sign up for a recipe newsletter. They would have gone to some baking site and signed up for a recipe site. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They would have gone and signed up. Oh, I want, they would have signed up for some pie site and signed up to their newsletter. They signed up to you, your newsletter because you're an author and they want to hear about books. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They want to hear about books. They want to hear about your book, but they don't want, but what's fascinating for you is not always fascinating for them. So, so when you're coming up with content, you don't need to, especially when you're starting, don't be original, just stick to the things that we talked about before book reviews and recommendations, sharing about your book and your world and building that tension and giveaways for books. You're a writer, you're an author, and they sign up to your newsletter hoping for stuff around the topics of writing and books, <laughs> mostly books, even the writing. And this is another don't do this. What is fascinating to you about your writing process, if you are writing only to, if your newsletter is only going out to other authors, that's a good one. If your newsletter is going out to readers, you guys, only a tiny, tiny, tiny percentage of readers are also writers. And so your writing process is not as fascinating to readers as it is to other writers or as it is to you. So stick to the topics that I gave you. If you're only sending out every other week, 
every two weeks, you have plenty of stuff in your books and in your wheelhouse of knowledge to be able to do book reviews, <laughs> book reviews, tell a bit about you do one character each time or a little bit about your world or a snippet or a picture or something or your map or your book cover. That's your second one. And then a giveaway. Okay. Those are the ones to, those are audience focused instead of you're focused only on yourself. And um, Barbara says, how is that different from being yourself enough that re potential readers can find you? You, your voice and your identity will come through in your newsletter without having to tell people about like, I like to bake, like who you are will come through in your writing. And, um, and like, if you're writing a book review, who you are comes through in the book review, who you are comes through as you're sharing your story and sharing snippets about your world. Okay. It comes through. You don't have to be blatant about it. They will find out. And I will tell you this also, nobody, okay. People love feeling heard. So people will find out more about you or they will trust you more. You will build a stronger, stronger relationship with people when they feel like you know what they love. <laughs> Okay. And what people love are those three things that I was telling you about. They love getting free stuff. They love, <laughs> they love getting book recommendations. And, and then as you, and they love, you know, hearing about the worlds, if they sign up to your newsletter, if they like romance and you write romance, they like hearing about romance. Okay. So you want to be about them. Have you ever met somebody who was so good at listening and you felt so amazingly heard and listened to and present and you just kind of crushed on them because they were so good at listening to you? You can be that person with your newsletter by really paying attention to what they love instead of paying attention to what you love. Okay. Do, 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 do. Um, Yes. So if this all feels a little overwhelming or you're like, I'm not sure if I can do this correctly or, uh, what about <laughs> if you have some kind of questions? Um, you know, it doesn't have to be overwhelming. It doesn't have to be difficult. And in fact, in the author boss Academy, we have video tutorials and PDFs and templates and all kinds of things to help you be really successful in your newsletter. And you guys know how important a newsletter is because Facebook just changed their algorithm. And it's so nice to have not to not have to worry about the algorithm <laughs> because you have an email list and you can send your newsletter to your people without worrying about Facebook. So you know how important it is. And, uh, and if it's something that you might think you want more help with, you can go ahead and check out the author boss Academy. Now, how many of you guys, a question, how many of you guys have done one or more of those things where you've collected email addresses and then ignored your audience, whether you've, you know, whether you've um, been like, ah, I don't have anything interesting to say, so I'm not going to send something to my readers because, you know, they, I don't want them to be bored. <laughs> okay. Or that you've gotten a little too original and were focused more on yourself than on your readers. How many people have done that before? I have. I'm like, hands up. I've totally done that. Now I'm trying to be better. <laughs> okay. So now it's time for your take action step. Go plan your next three newsletters. Okay. You can, we call this an editorial calendar. Okay. Plan the net, your newsletters for the next two months. Okay. You could, you, if you've listened to the previous videos, you have your welcome email which is the automated email. And then you have the book review, the world, share a little bit about your world or character, and then the giveaway. And then the giveaway announcement of who won, <laughs> of who won. That's almost, that's four newsletters. That's five newsletters with the, with the announce who won the giveaway. That's five newsletters. That's over two months of newsletter content, you guys. So like, and that's just that. And then you just repeat it. Okay. So put those topics on your calendar, or if you want bonus points, go ahead and write the emails now and schedule them. The giveaway you'll have to work with a little bit, but the other ones you can write and schedule and then they're done. Okay. And Megan has also made an amazing newsletter checklist 
that we are sharing as a giveaway for you guys. If you want to have a checklist that you can just print it up and keep it next to your computer so that you can make sure to get everything done that you need to get done, you can get the newsletter checklist, copying and pasting, putting in the comments. Do, do, do. Oops, there. If you want the newsletter checklist, you can go ahead and sign up to get it there. Um, if you want more help with newsletters, giveaways, MailChimp, etc., we can really help you. So in the Author Boss Academy, like we've got all this stuff in the Author, Author Boss Academy. We've got video tutorials where you actually watch, you know, walk, we walk you through step by step on video. We've got step by step worksheets, PDFs, where it's like step one, do this, step two, do this. And it's not abstract, it's very specific. <laughs> We've got weekly live calls. We've got a private Facebook group. And through the end of the month of January, it is only $39 a month. Okay, we are actually raising the price on February 1st. And we want everybody to get in at the cheaper price who. If you've been thinking about, oh, maybe I want to see, hang out with Megan and Ella a little more, or maybe I just need a little bit more help, or if you really want to make a commitment to your writing in 2018, I would highly recommend at least coming and checking out our webinar to find out more about the Academy, and seeing if it's a good fit for you. Because the Academy, because the price is going up and we don't want you, you know, we want you to get in at the best price <laughs> if it's something you've been considering and you're like, well, should I or shouldn't I? $39 a month is not that much to commit to your writing. And um, I mean, it's it's money. We all have, you know, like we're like, there's been times when $39 a month. But if you are committed to your writing and you want to check out and find out more about the Author Boss Academy and get the help that you need to easily set up your newsletter <laughs> and email list and do all this stuff, Sign up to, and if you want to find out more, sign up to the webinar. I just posted a link. Oops, I forgot the H and H. Hold on. I forgot the H. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. I'm editing. H. Yay. Better. <laughs> okay. Sign up for the webinar. It's this Friday and you can find out more about the Author Boss Academy. See if it's a good fit for you. And next week, you guys, is the final week of January for me. So next week, I'm going to be showing you examples of really great newsletters and doing a little Q&A. Some of you guys have had some questions. Um, the ones that have not been watching live, you guys had some questions. So I'm going to answer some of those questions if they haven't been answered um, in the previous videos and give you some examples of really great newsletters. So I will see you guys if you want to... If you want to see that next week, <laughs> come around Tuesday at the same time, same place, Author Like a Boss Facebook group. Thank you. Hugs and happy writing.